Welcome to Drawing Tips and Tricks. Um, one of the first things we do is <clears throat> we can often draw with a blue pencil first and then use that as a guide um, of what to actually draw on top of it. It gives you a spacing guide, a construction guide, any kind of guidelines you want to put down. And then using either software or uh, multiple layers you can delete the uh, blue line and you left over with a nice clean drawing. So let's start with a fresh uh, slate. And one of the first things to do is um, just warm up and um, draw straight lines and try and space them evenly. One trick is to visualize where you want to go to and where you're going to start and just visualize that you're going to draw a line from there to there and practice drawing that. Okay, um, I have a little unusual angle here because I'm trying to get the film to show you properly. Um, <clears throat> so it's a little tougher to do those. Uh, but you can, let's say we want to go there and we want a nice arcing line. Um, that's the way to do it. You aim and you just keep practicing until you get like better because that will come in handy when you're cleaning up your characters and need to fo follow through, um, you know, constructing the contours of your character. The other thing to do is practice just drawing circles. Uh, this is really excellent drawing practice because um, most characters are constructed over either basic egg shapes or circles and just practice, um, you know, literally doing pages full. And these are mediocre, you know, um, but just that kind of practice really helps because the next step then, let's go back to a blue pencil here, is that we're going to draw and draw a character. So we want a nice circular shape and then we put our construction lines over it. So we've got construction lines over the uh, latitude and longitude. And you can see now that that gives you a nice sense of volume. That one doesn't. <laughs> okay. So what that does is, let's say I'm drawing my character here while I put the eyes, well, well wait a minute, where do I put the nose? And, and so it doesn't get really guide you where to place the features. Um, when you've got the uh, guide, we know the line, eyes are going to sit on this line. The nose is going to protrude from this edge, so, you know, say a, a person's nose will protrude like that. And the mouth will be under it, and that gives us our guideline. So let's try and do um, do a picture of Iggy using this. Okay, so I've drawn Iggy hundreds and hundreds of times, so it's pretty easy for me to draw him. He's a little bit either egg-shaped, or another way to approach him would be to um, do him with a circle and then add, you know, kind of puffy cheeks on the side. And um, either method works. <clears throat> Sometimes you can kind of contour in. Um, the other is I can even bring out the cheeks and give a little bit of a, a kind of dimple there. And construct the nose as kind of a somewhat of an oval, but adding a little bit of extra on the bottom just kind of helps to define that the, the nostrils would be coming in like that. So it gives it a little more, rather than just straight um, a straight oval, gives it a little more depth and dimension. And no matter what character you're using, these kind of tricks and tips will, will help to um, add definition and more um, depth to your characters. So then I place the character's eyes here. Now Iggy and Bunny, the way I had drawn them in the film, is I just add, used um, you know uh, little uh, dots for the eyes, kind of like um, the way the Winnie the Pooh characters were drawn. And occasionally I'll add, like, you know, if, if it's like an exaggerated expression, I'll add the rest of the shape of the eye. So it's kind of as if it's implied. So let's draw it out here and finish this little face here. And this ear should be a little bit bigger. And there we go. So we've got a nice Iggy there. So when we're cleaning up <clears throat> with a black pen here, So now I'm not going to use all of those lines that I created for the construction. I'm just going to pick the, and choose the ones that I want. So another thing we can do is give them a little bit of cheeks, pull the mouth over to the side, which helps give more definition, a little bit of a lip. 
And the other thing I do, as, as I'm drawing the contour, I'm kind of stroking it, feeding you know, one line into the next. And that gives me a nice smooth contour around the edge. Um, you know, everybody has their own methods of doing things. Some will go slowly and just ink over a line like that. I tend to draw fast, so I will use the stroke method a lot. Depending whether I'm drawing also with a, a pen that will go thick and thin, so it goes very thin to thick, depending on my pressure, or whether I'm using a pen that would be um, uh, got one here, a black one. Um, that would just be no matter what the pressure, it's still even. So, and it gives you a different type of drawing by using both of these types of, uh, uh, you know, whether you're using a thick and thin line or a straight, um, even line. Uh, very different look to it. So, uh, let's finish up this Iggy with a thick and thin line. Just add the eyebrows in. And we're going to delete the blue, and that gives us a nice Iggy, where now we're still with the, the kind of button eyes. And on this one, I'm going to quickly construct Iggy looking a little bit to the side, so I want to have the nose about there. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll, I'll be searching for the form as I'm drawing. Uh, I add a little extra top to the nose to give a little depth so it stands out from the face and put the eyes in <clears throat> and now the nose and the ears and in this case since it's a little more three-quarter um, adding what's um, known as perspective to the drawing I often like to make that my uh, face is a little bit as asymmetrical because it creates more interest I can bring his cheek out here and bring it out over here a little bit probably bring the ears up a little and now I've got a nice rough of Iggy. And when I start to clean up, now one of the things I can do is exaggerate the perspective that I've done. So I've got this eye here, and if I make this one fairly large, and this one which is actually further away, and exaggerate that, it gives me more depth in the drawing. So my eye, eyelids, uh, the eyebrows rather, are going to kind of as if they're going to wrap around. I'll show you with a red here if they're going to wrap around like that because then the, the eye would be here and then the eye brows come up like that so let's get rid of the red and we'll now finish cleaning that up so I'm wrapping that around now it also depends on your expression um, what the eyelids are doing I mean the eyebrows but there we go and this one's much smaller stroke the edges around here bring the cheek in Maybe here, have the uh, mouth protruding a little bit. Mouth comes up, makes a dimple by the face, uh, the eye. Bring in the nose, a little bit there. <clears throat> and stroke, continue stroking the lines as I go around. Maybe bring the elbow up over it so it breaks this line, which, uh, oops, I'll just set that to erase before it can do that. Okay, so now I can erase that. Okay, that's better. And rather than, you know, having it like this, which is a tangent, so your eye is going to go there, by breaking it, it makes that more interesting. Okay? Now this ear, since it's closer, also will be larger. And this ear will be a little bit smaller. And I often bring like a little bit of line in here to give definition to. So I'm basically taking a I'm treating it as if it's a bunch of clay and just sculpting it around. So what I'm doing with these is sometimes I'm using, now that didn't work, so I don't, I'll undo that. Uh, most of Iggy's shapes are um, convex, which would be like this. Concave would be the opposite. Um, <clears throat> so if this is a, say a balloon, it's going to be all kind of convex shapes. Uh, something like a vase might be more of a concave kind of shape. And what you want to do is, where you can, use both of these types of lines in a drawing. So, now I've got Iggy in perspective, okay? So, let's take start over. And um, let's do a, an Iggy now, where, we'll start with blue again, where we have a full standing pose for Iggy. Alright, I'd like to 
through the nose sometimes just to orient myself. And rather than just having Iggy standing there doing nothing, yeah, it's probably a little too um, too tall for Iggy. He's I like to draw him where he's more, you know, just about maybe a one and a half, uh, no, two and a half heads high. Maybe this is a little bit too tall. So I'll erase that. And I actually may do these drawings, you know, over and over, like the process of cleaning up and searching the form on multiple layers or, you know, drawing over in blue and like starting from scratch or even just, <clears throat> you know, drawing, taking down the opacity. So now it's very faint and now starting to search for my forms again. So I've got Iggy here. And it's always more interesting if you're not having the carriages standing straight up, but always adding asymmetry, which is where things are not. So maybe Iggy is like, you now to, to do that pose, he's going to need to have his foot out to support him. And maybe this, um, this one is going to be out over this way, possibly. Um, and let's say maybe he's, he's pleading for something. Okay, so his arms are going to be, you know. So in this case, he might be looking up like he's please um, pleading to the crocodile not to eat him or not to eat his his best friend uh, bunny so now in this case the ears now since the head if the uh, this is Iggy's nose and eyes eyes and nose of course um, and the ears if he's pointing up like this so that the nose is like that and the eyes are like that the ears are going to drop back the mouth will come up also so if he's looking up, this is going to be more the looking up pose. So we move the ears back down. Um, it gives him that looking up pose. Whereas if, um, just to show you by comparison, see now it doesn't look like he's looking up anymore. Um, looks like his ears are sticking way up. Or something just looks wrong, or, or sometimes I'll even bring the ears down like this, and it it really helps push the eyebrows way up, and so then, or maybe maybe there's sad sad expression, and I often like to draw more on this side of the mouth to just get more of that perspective uh, uh, dimension in of uh, the things receding in distance and getting larger in the foreground. So now we've got a an eggy pleading here. One of the things I'm not happy in this drawing is this is kind of muddled in here, but it's also not clear in these sections here. So let's maybe I'll have Iggy a little more like that. And so I'm going to bring the arms out so you can s so we have some uh, negative space in here. So there's some air space that allows the shape to read better. So if I were to color this you know, and he's doing it this way versus doing it this way. You can see a lot better what's going on in this, whereas if I color this one, you can't see what's happening there. So, and again, we just go th go through the process of uh, cleaning it up. Oops. Always good to have a, a keyboard shortcut, and a lot of uh, Cintiqs have buttons on the side where you can program it so one button just is like does undo your last line. I use that all the time. Um, also use lots of keyboard shortcuts. Uh, that saves you lots of time. Anything you can do to, to save you time will help. Uh, as they say, time is money and time in animation is time for extra drawings to get done. And there's never seemed to be enough time to get all the drawings you need to get done. Um, okay. Um, I often make Iggy a little bit of a pot belly, pot belly pig. Okay, and then we've got Iggy in here now pleading. <clears throat> so let's uh, do another Iggy now, and this time let's have, let's say he is going to be pointing or something, uh, pointing and kind of angry at us. So, so now. Problem with this one 
it's something I do all the time where I will straighten up the character and there's like no depth to it. So to get more interesting depth, well, let's see, we want to have Iggy leaning in towards us. Okay, so I'm thinking in my head where the shape is going to go for the rest of the body. Um, his shoulders are going to be over now and maybe he's pointing so and I'm not happy with that one either so we'll start over again all right let's see so we've got this thrust of the body doing this the other thing I'm going to do though this time is I'm going to add a four plane and this will help me I'm seeing now that I already have a lot of dimension going in in space and I'm going to take this um, and put his hand here now. I want it to be coming, pointing at us a little bit more, so I'm going to exaggerate that. To counterbalance that, I've got his hand over here. And now what this floor point does is allows me to to make the feet really interesting in terms of placement. Because now they're in different sections of the floor. Um, whereas if we go back to the last drawing, you can see this is all in the same spot and it flattens the drawing out. So it makes it as if it's kind of crushed between glass. Where now, oops, wrong way. Okay, now it feels like the, it's starting to come out at you. I think I can probably push this hand here even more so. You know, I can really make this big and I probably want to move the hand out a little bit more. I've been drawing for years and years, so this comes fairly quickly to me and to most artists who do this for a living, you know, or they're drawing all the time. Um, in the beginning, though, you know, you're going to be taking your time, you know, finding the shape, and it'll be a slower process, but it's like riding a bicycle. So you'll learn these skills, <clears throat> and they'll just grow, and after a while, they'll be second nature to you. But I'm always kind of trying to visualize the things where I want to go in my head, but a lot of times it's a searching process on the page to actually find um, what that vision actually is, to make that vision real so that other people can actually see it. So now here I probably want to bring this shoulder over. No, maybe not. Another way to go would be to let's just drop that shoulder. Um, I'm always looking for ways to, to make more drawing more dimensional or more interesting. <clears throat> so. Um, Pull this in this way. See, if I point, have the other arm over here, it brings our attention too much to that way, and so we don't want to do that. So um, <clears throat> let's undo those. Go here. And so I'm searching for this, maybe my line of action here. Let's see. Okay, and so you know, may, maybe just, that's not bad. 